so hello everyone welcome to the another video of scale up india in this video we are going to discuss about multi threading first of all we will understand why do we need multi threading then we will go through what is multi threading and at the end we are going to discuss how to achieve multi threading this tutorial is going to be more practical based approach instead of the theoretical one for the theory for the basic definitions and other things you can always go through various websites and many other videos also so let's get started so first of all let's discuss why multi threading imagine that av is a college going student now he has been assigned with a particular assignment the goal is that he needs to go through this assignment and needs to prepare a summary of it or maybe some other file the person needs to create now in order to go through one particular file and create the summary this person takes around 1 hour and after 1 hour he is ready with his assignment okay so the goal is done scenario is also clear now let's take second scenario this time av has been assigned with two assignments now for the first assignment he will start and he is going to take one particular hour and after that he is going to create the summary of it then he is going to start with the second one and after again one hour he is going to complete the second book also in order to complete two assignments he is going to take two hours now let's go for the third scenario now this time he has been assigned with four assignments at the same time and as you know for every assignment he is going to take one hour after one hour he is going to provide you the summary so for the after the second hour he is going to complete the second one and so on we can say that goes for the third and similarly for the fourth one but the problem is that because of all these things he is very much tired and he has started crying now we can also exaggerate this the same scenario and we can say that imagine if he get something like 24 assignments then that means the whole day he is just keep on doing the assignment work only there is no rest time there is no play time and no time for anything else yeah so in this case av makes a prayer he says i wish i could have cloned myself maybe there can be multiple copies of avs so that he can decide his task among the various copies and luckily this request gets approved by the god so let's see what happens when this request gets approved and he gets some special powers this time when he has been assigned with the four assignments what he can do is he can make four copies of himself every copy is going to take one single hour in order to complete the assignment and at the end of one hour he will be having four assignments with himself so the task for which he was taking four hours earlier now he will be just taking one single hour and it doesn't matter whether he is going to have four assignments or five or 10 or even 24 or even 100 he can make that number of copies of himself and they can all work parallelly on this thing and they can finish the same task in one hour only yeah and this is what we call as multi threading yeah so let's talk about the definition of multi threading so what is multi threading now we say multi threading in java refers to the ability of a java program to execute multiple threads concurrently allowing it to perform multiple tasks concurrently and parallel as you saw in the case of av so we can say that av was the main thread then he created multiple copies of himself which means he created multiple threads of himself and then every thread was able to perform the same task parallelly one thread doesn't need to wait for the another thread yeah now what is a thread so going by the definition it says a thread is a lightweight process that has its own execution path and shares the same memory space as the parent process allowing for efficient communication and synchronization between the threads yeah so let's break down it into the simple terms so it says it's a lightweight process so you can just say that it's a, just a part of the main thread 
so what is going to happen is here it is going to utilize the multiprocessors now we say that our computers are already already having the multiprocessors and we can do multiple tasks on the same like as you see i i have i'm running a particular ppt also a presentation parallelly i can listen some to music also and i'm recording this video also so java can make utilize of the same memory space and can divide itself in multiple small threads and everyone can do the same tasks parallelly and what is going to be the benefit the benefit obviously in the terms of time and in the terms of efficiency one thread doesn't needs to wait for the another thread in order to complete the job and in this way we can even make our processes faster this technology is basically used when we are going to have big applications like which are running on the servers or maybe you have gone through games like pubg or many other games which allow so many users simultaneously playing the game now how is it possible again those servers and all those things are going to allow the multi threading but we should also be aware that how we can make usage of same multi threading in our very basic java code so for this now let's directly move on towards a java code first of all we will see why do we need a multi threading there also again there we will be having a particular scenario we will understand the need of it then we will see how to achieve the multi threading and then we will proceed with it okay. so let's move to our eclipse so here instead of eclipse i will be using spring tool suit because the same i will be later on using for my spring boot videos also but you can go for eclipse also it's the same thing only nothing much difference so here i'll go with my first demo first of all i will be explaining you this demo once you are clear with this basic demo then you can go through all other demos in a very simple way let's get started so first of all let's go to this com.skillupindia.entity package and here you can see that i'm having a particular employee class now in this employee class as you can see i'm just having two particular variables one is id which is an integer another is a name which is a string i'm using here parameterized constructor which i have created automatically here with the help of eclipse then i'm using the getter methods here and i'm also using a two string method the benefit of overriding the two string method is that whenever i will be printing the employee object i will get the details of id as well as name so it's always a good practice to override the same and i suggest you to do it then let's go here here i'm having a repository class first of all i will be just explaining you all the classes and what is the purpose of it and then we will connect the dots so this is my employee repository class or sorry it's an interface and as you can see here i'm having a display employees method it is not going to take any arguments and it is going to return you a void only now i have some implementation of this interface as of now let me just go through the first implementation so what i'm doing here is that i'm implementing the interface here i have created a static private list which is an array list i'm also having a static block here and what i'm doing in this static block is that i'm initializing the list with some default employees so five employees are there some random names starting with my name itself now after this i'm having a method display employees and whenever this method will be executed it will just iterate over the list and is going to print the employee now since we have overridden the two string method it is going to display the id as well as name a simple thing now you may ask what was the purpose of static block here so imagine that if i would have directly called the particular display employees method then at that point of time the list would have been empty and it would have not shown me anything but what i want is that before i call this method automatically the list gets filled up with some data in case if you are working with a particular database you can always read from the database if you are working with some file you can read from the file also now here i want to make this demo simple so here i am making usage of the static method if you wish you can also go for the 
constructor also and within the constructor you can start and you can add the elements into the list but I'll prefer that go for the static blocks for such kind of things instead of the constructor constructor should be only to initialize the variable not to fill up the whole data in itself in those uh, variables or the list another thing which I have done is that I have overridden the two string method for this now the only purpose for this is that let's say later on at any point of time if I'm going to print the object of this class so it will print me the name of the class and not the address in itself yeah? and there is the same implementation for my employee 2 also and this employee repository 3 also the only difference is here we have all the employees starting with 2 and here we have all the employees starting with the 3 rest the implementation is exactly same now let's go to our service layer now service layer as you know contains mainly the business logic but here it doesn't has anything much and it is just going to call your display employees method of the repository class now here what we are doing first of all we are saying it is going to have a particular variable as employee repository then we have a particular constructor of this which is going to take an employee repository object and depending on that particular object it is going to call the display employees method now before calling this particular method what I'm doing is I'm having some sysout statements here yeah and what I'm doing here is I'm saying thread dot current thread dot get me. now you will say that okay how this thread came up here have we already started with the multi-threading the answer is that multi-threading was always there in the Java the moment you created your very first hello world class or the hello world code at that point of time also multi-threading was there and by default there is always one single thread which we call as a main thread so what is the purpose of this particular part of code the purpose is that here we are already having a thread class which Java has created for you now that class contains a method as current thread now since it is a static method you can directly call it with the class name now this current thread is going to point the thread at that point of time the thread which is working and when I say get name so it is going to print its name so whatever is the thread at that point of time its name will be printed and we will come to know which thread is executing this and as I say Java always has one thread and what it will say it will say started fetching from and then the name of repository since we have overridden the two string method again you can check out here so we have overridden the two string method so when I will call by passing this object it will print me this name if I will pass the second object it will print me second name and so on and similarly once it has completed the job it is going to say that it has finished the execution or finished reading from that particular repository I hope it's simple as of now now let's go to our main class with the demo so whatever the class is going to contain the main method I generally call it as my main class so you can always understand by that so here I'm having my main method now again what I'm doing in the starting I'm saying that the current thread the name of the thread I'm printing and I'm saying it has started fetching just to know the name of the thread and at the end I will say that the same thread has finished fetching so that we can get an idea now within this what I have done is I have created an object of employee service IMPL initially it's just a variable not an object basically so I'm pointing it to null and then later on what I'm doing is I'm saying here new of employee service IMPL first I'm passing first repository repository IMPL1 then I'm calling the run method of employee service one then the same thing I will do with the second one I will call its run method then again I will do it with the third one and I will call the run method again simple so I will be creating three objects of employee service every time I'm going to pass one particular repository object there I will call the run method 
run method will internally call the display employees method and we will get to know the list of employees from that particular repository and as you know they will go one by one now in order to understand that how much time this process is going to take what I have done is that before starting this particular code I'm saying system dot current time milis what this will do is that depending on the time of my system of my laptop it is going to provide me the time in milliseconds and will save here and once the whole stuff is completed I'm printing this statement that in how much time it has completed it will be the time in milliseconds if you wish you can later on convert it to seconds also and minutes so let's see how this demo is going to work what is the output how much time it is going to take so I'll just click here and let me open the console I'm dragging it here and let's get started so it was a quick output as you can see so first of all this particular statement get executed and we come to know that the name of thread is main so by default always the name of thread is main you can also say that it is the same as your method name but that is how the things work later on we come to know that it goes here for the first repository we are going to call the run method let me click and we will see the implementation of it so it goes here and it says main started fetching from employee repository IMPL1 then we go inside the display employees method again we'll go for implementation for the first one and what it does it is just going to print so it has printed and then it says it has finished and done. then it goes for the second one then third one and so on and overall it just took four milliseconds so that is how the things work from the demo it is going to service from the service it is going to repository we are creating three objects of service and passing all the repositories one by one it is reading from there and showing you the output overall process took four milliseconds now since the job of printing doesn't takes much time we just got four milliseconds here but in the reality the things are not going to be that simple that you have all everything within a list only you may need to read from some file you may need to read from some database you may need to do some kind of computation on it so for that purpose let's do something what we want is that after printing every name it doesn't directly starts printing the second name and instead it holds for some amount of time now for this purpose what I can do is I can execute some kind of for loop maybe I can just execute an empty for loop from 1 to 1000 assuming that for loop will take 1000 seconds or something or 1000 milliseconds I can execute some while loop also but then again I need to keep on increasing the number and see how much time it is going to take so again here let's take help of this thread class only this one which I mentioned here so I told you that with the help of this thread since there is a thread we can point it and we can get it names so with the same thread so obviously that same thread is going to print all these so what we will say is we will say thread dot sleep so we will call a method of it now the sleep method is going to take time in milliseconds so we will be using this particular one and here I'll say thousand so thousand milliseconds means one particular second yeah. so here now it is showing me some kind of exception let me save it first and let's see what is the exception is so it says there is an unhandled exception so let's handle this how so as of now we are not much concerned how we are going to handle so what I will be doing is I'll simply surround it with a try and catch block something like this and I'm going to remove this particular comment and that's done so here we go so now we have a try catch block so after printing every employee it is going to wait for one second then second employee printing and then one second and let's copy this logic to another class and remember that if you are not aware about the unhandled exceptions then you need to go through the 
multi exception handling mechanism and see how the things work there yeah. so there we go and let's execute the same code again let me drag the console up again and this time I know that for every name it will take one second so if a repository is going to have five names it will take almost like five seconds since I'm having three repositories it will take 15 seconds yeah so let's see let's execute it again and this time you can see the output is little slow let's wait for it so there we go it's on second one and in the reality the same things happen guys it is reading from some file it is taking the time it is reading from some database database maybe on your local machine or maybe on some other server and overall it says it took 15,166 milliseconds which is almost equivalent to 15 seconds you may say that how this 166 came here so the reason is that in between we are also instantiating the object we are calling one class from another class so almost uh, that particular part is all also going to take some time from us so overall this is we can say around 15 seconds now after this let's go for the second part of the story what we can also do is we can go for our demo 2 which is here only as of now I'm not finished with this let's make some changes here and this is my code so this time what I'm going to do is rest of the things are going to remain same my repository interface repository implementation service class implementation entity everything is same this part of code is also same and this part of code is also same the only change which I have done is that earlier I was instantiating the service object three times and passing repositories one by one but what I'm doing this time is that first of all I have created an array of repository and within this particular array I have provided all my implementations by default and then I'm just executing a for loop so I hope it's not a very big deal it's a simple thing only rest of the things will remain same let's see does it adds any advantage to us so let's execute from here as a java application obviously and there it goes but still it is going to say take same time because the rest of the logic is same the only difference is that instead of instantiating the object three times manually we are asking the for loop to do the same for us yeah. and again it takes around 15 seconds this 133 146 will keep on changing from time to time it doesn't matter yeah so there we go now let's try to analyze that does it really needs 15 seconds for doing this stuff now we say that try to think is there any condition that it cannot read from repository 2 before completing repository 1 as of now we will say yes there is a condition because Java is going to run sequentially so it cannot go for line number two before it completes line number one but thinking logically there is nothing like this it's again like the case we were having with AV AV can go for the second assignment also parallelly if it is possible for him and similarly he can go for third or fourth assignment also parallelly but the problem was we were having only one instance of AV there was only one particular AV and hence at a point of time he can go for a single assignment only same is the case here we are having a single thread only here now because we are only having a single thread we can just go by sequentially one by one we will go for the first repository then second and third and so on and there comes the concept of multi-threading in our Java also that imagine if this main thread can create multiple threads like the superpower we were having with the AV then every thread we can assign the task to read from one repository now every thread will just take in total five seconds to read from one particular repository and three threads can take again five seconds overall only to read from three repositories and the whole stuff we can complete within five seconds only 
the issue is not with only for the three repositories but the point is imagine if we were having something like 100 1000 2000 or something like those many number of repositories we should not take that much amount of time we should be able to create multiple threads here also and then assign them the task so i hope you are getting my point now if that is clear let's see how we can achieve multi threading here i mean how we can get that particular superpower in this code directly and i hope the scenario is also clear in case if it is not clear you can go back in the video and can again watch for this demo zero because it is important for understanding demo one and later on demos also so let's go back to our ppt part so let's see how to achieve multi-threading here so we say that in java when you want to achieve multi-threading first way is that you are going to use the thread class now here first of all i will be explaining with a basic example here and then again we will try to implement the same example in our code so we say that with the help of thread class how we can achieve is first of all in whichever the class you want the multi-threading concept you need to extend the thread class there this is the same thread class which we were using for printing the name for sleeping and in order to achieve multi-threading also we just need to extend this particular thing second job is that whatever the logic you want that it should be executing parallelly maybe reading from the repositories reading from database or some file you need to write that logic within your run method now this run method is a special one because we are overriding this method thread class by default contains a run method but we can say it's an abstract one and we are going to override the method with our business logic whichever the task we want to do parallelly and not only this after this we also need to call the start method so as you can see with the object of demo so i hope this is possible in java because here we say that thread is the parent of demo so i can just simply write like this thread thread equals to new of demo and then I need to call the start method because if you will directly call the run method multi threading will never come into the picture it will behave in the same way like it was behaving earlier also and I will show you also practically in order to achieve the multi threading we need to call the start method now you may ask that where are we going to implement the start method what is going to be the logic of the start method but the point is we are not going to implement the start method we just need to implement the run method here start method is already implemented in your thread class and we don't need to worry what logic it contains if you wish i can show you the logic also but i won't be explaining it in depth because it's not important to understand that logic in order to understand the multi-threading and here i guess you comes to know that there is the power of abstraction in java that's why we see it till now you didn't saw what was there within your thread class what was the content of your current thread method or get name or the sleep but we were able to use it and that's why we say java gives you abstraction so this is our first way step one extend the thread class step two write the logic in your run method step number three call the start method or invoke the start method another way is before going for the another way let's discuss what is the disadvantage of this the disadvantage is imagine that if i want to extend any other class on demo then it is not possible because now i can't say class demo extends a comma thread because in Java, it allows only single inheritance. We cannot extend from two different parents. So that is the only disadvantage of the thread class here. And the solution is that we can make usage of other runnable interface. Now, since runnable is an interface, we will be using the implements keyword instead of extends. Rest of the logic is same. Again, we are going to put our logic into the run method we are just going to override the run method and how we will be doing out here so here we will say runnable runnable because now runnable is the parent of demo and now again we need to call the start method but the problem is runnable is an interface 
it only contains the abstract run method it doesn't contains the start method start method is always available in your thread class so what we will do is we will still take the help of the thread class in the thread class we are already having a particular constructor which can take your runnable object and you will say that okay how we will get the runnable object this is the same which we just created here new of demo that is our runnable object that we are going to pass to this thread class and with the thread we can call the start method you may say that how this is possible that runnable we can pass into the thread the reason is that runnable and thread are again related with each other runnable is the parent of thread so that's why we say that in order to achieve the multi threading one option is directly extend the thread class or you take the help from the parent of thread which is runnable and with the help of it we can achieve the multi threading now the questions can be that okay which one we should go for so again that depends from the requirements to requirements if there is a requirement to extend any class you can always go for the runnable interface but if you feel that you don't needs to extend any other class you can always go for the thread class directly yeah. it completely depends there is not much any difference between the performance and other things and this is the simple logic so let's again go to the code see how we are going to achieve this how we are going to extend the thread class how we are going to implement the runnable interface and how we will get some kind of advantage so we are back here to our spring tool suit and this time we are going to start with the demo one before that again i'm going to drag this up and you can again see earlier we were taking around 15 seconds so let me go to this demo one now the logic for other classes is almost same i'll still go for all the classes quickly so that you can verify if there is any change so first of all let me go for this entity so this is entity exactly same there is not a single difference actually i have just copy pasted it from the first demo then this is my repository again no difference this is my repository impl it is still the same thousand sleep and everything is still same that i say same for impl2 same for impl3 there is not even a single change now let's go for the service now in the service i have done a small change and the change is that this time i'm going to extend the thread because that was our first logic that we or our first step that we need to extend the thread class here now the second step if you remember was that we need to override the run method now interestingly if you see that by default i was using the name of my method as run only now it doesn't matter whether you say at the rate override annotation or not because our definition is exactly same but even if you wish you can write here at the rate override that's the only purpose otherwise you could you could have said me that why you are calling the name of the method as run and not any other name so that's was the only reason rest of the logic is still same let's go to a demo class and this time let's go here now again you can see everything is same as our previous demo and since now you are aware that how can we make usage of the arrays here so directly i'm going for the array way of using it i'm just calling the run method here so we were having three steps step number was step number 1 was to extend the thread class step number 2 was to override the run method provide our logic the logic for reading whatever the thing you want to do parallelly so that and the step 3 was to invoke the start method but let's say we forgot the step 3 and we are just invoking the run method let's see what happens so i'll just click here let me drag this up first and let's see what happens now so it's again taking the time maybe it will take less than 15 seconds since we are going to achieve the multi threading but you can see there is no multi threading as of now still we are just getting a single name of thread as main so main started fetching main started fetching from file 1 then 2 and then 3 and overall again it took around 15 seconds so that means that if you are going to use the run method here if you are going to invoke the run method 
the issue is not that code is not going to run or we are going to have any kind of compilation or runtime error. The code will still work, but it is not going to provide you the functionality of multi-threading. That functionality can be achieved only when we will go for the start method. So hence, let's go for our demo too. And the only difference is I'm using the start here. Rest, everything is seen. Now before I execute this, let me show you the implementation of start method if you wish. So let's go for this and there we see. So this is the implementation of start guys in our thread dot class. So this is the big implementation. You don't need to worry about what is written here. And this is your whole thread class. This much big. It's almost like more than 2100 lines. So this is your thread class. And as you can see, it is going to implement the runnable interface. I can open this also. And this is your runnable interface, which contains your abstract run method only. If you know about functional interface, you can mention me in the comments. Otherwise, we can discuss about that in some other video. But as of now, it's not important. Important is this run method. Important is the runnable interface and the thread class. And here we have other methods and constructors, but you don't need to worry about them as of now. So let's close these things and let's go for our demo too. Since I will be going for demo too, let me close demo so that you don't get confused. Let's start with it. And I'm again clicking here. So let's see what happens. Okay. So this time we got the output quickly as compared to the previous one. And what's the output? So first it says main started fetching this particular statement. Then it says thread zero, which means the thread has been created. And this is the default name which has been provided. So thread zero has started fetching from employee repository IMPL one. And just after this, it says completed in one milliseconds. So this line got executed, completed in one milliseconds. Then it says that thread one has started from reading from employee repository two, then thread two has started from employee repository IMPL three. So we have achieved the goal of creating multiple threads here, thread one, thread zero, thread one, and thread two. Also, we can see the time has decreased, but is it correct? The answer is no, that is not possible because we know that in one single class, it is at least going to take five seconds because we have deliberately added one second gap after reading each and every name. Yeah. So because of that reason, it is not possible that overall it can be completed in one milliseconds. Also, it says that main started mean finished fetch. Now that is not logically possible because the job of main was to create the threads. Then every thread was going to read every thread was going to take at least five seconds, then they were about to finish and then main should have finished and this completed statement should have got executed. But what happened was that this completed statement got executed before other threads finished. Now, why this happened? Let's try to understand. This time we were not having single thread, but we were having four threads in total. One was available by default which we call as the main thread. And then the main thread created three more threads as thread zero, thread one, and thread two. Now the job of thread zero was to read from the list. After every reading, it should stop for one second, then second, then third, and so on. Same was the job of thread one and thread two. But what was the job of main thread? The job of main thread was to create three threads here for three different repositories. And then the main thread was only left with the job of printing these two statements. So this time what happened was that all these threads went to our processor, the processor of the laptop, they went there. Thread zero was also competing. Thread one was also competing. Thread two was also competing and main thread was also in the competition. Now main thread said to the processor that see, these other threads are going to take more time. For me, it is only two lines to be printed. 
so please allow me to print the first so processor said that okay granted you can complete your job and hence it was possible but we didn't wanted anything like this to happen what we want is that main thread should print these two lines only after other threads have finished which means we want our main thread to wait for the finishing of other threads so for this job we need to ask the main thread that you can't simply print those two lines and finish your job you need to wait for the other threads to complete yeah. so let's do and then only we will come to know the actual time which the multi threading took here so let's go for demo 3 so we will come up here and let's see what we are going to do here so this time rest of the logic is same but what I have created is I have created a thread array here now the length of this thread array is same as the number of employee repositories because I know that for every repository one thread will be created so the size of thread array will be 3 now what I'm doing is that after creating the object of employee service for a particular repository I'm passing that object into this array of threads and then from this array I'm starting so that I will be doing earlier I was calling the start method on it directly this time first I'm saving it in the array and then I'm calling it's allowed now after this what I'm also doing is that besides outside the for loop I'm starting another for loop and that is upon this thread array and there I'm saying join method now what does this join method will do let's try to understand it in simple terms the definition of the method as I said for the definitions if you want to go you can always read it from the any website the main purpose of these demos this video is to provide you the practical knowledge of it so let's understand how this join method is going to do for this what we will do is let's try to take help of some paint here although my drawing is not that good but I'll still try to show you how the things are going to work so let's see so this is the pencil let me give it a try so initially I was having one single thread something like this which we call as the main thread now when the first for loop started we created three threads out of this this is thread number zero this is thread number one and this is thread number two but does it means that this main thread is finished the answer is no main thread also exists there the job of this thread number zero was to read five names from repository one the job of thread one was to read five names from repository two and the job of this thread number two was to read again five names from repository number three and after every reading sleep for one second and the job of this main thread was just to print two lines but now we want that this should not only print two lines but should also wait for them to end so for this what we are doing is that on this main thread we are calling the join for all of them so we will call the join method now join method will do something like this join method will ensure that there is something like a knot so we are going to tie a knot for this and main thread is going to wait for this time once the knot has been tied which means all other threads have completed their job then only main thread can proceed otherwise it will just keep on waiting earlier it was able to finish but now it needs to wait and that weight can be achieved by calling join on other threads so here when we say join it says waits for this thread to die so we are waiting for which thread to die for employee service one which is there in the employee service one thread zero so we are waiting for thread zero to die then we are waiting for thread one to die we are waiting for thread two to die and who is waiting for their death our main thread is going to wait for their Death, which means that their whole life cycle should be able to end and again this join method can throw us some kind of exception which is unhandled exception so we need to have a try catch mechanism here
so i hope that is clear with this basic drawing what we are doing here yeah and after this main thread should be able to print these rest of the two lines so let's execute the code and before that let me drag this up let's see what happens so this time you can see it looks pretty first it says main started fetching then it says thread 1 thread 2 and thread 0 started fetching from these three files now this guys we need to understand that when we are saying the term new here so at that point of time the thread has been created and the stage is the newborn stage and when we say start then it comes to the runnable stage so it doesn't actually starts running the moment we call the start method instead it simply comes to the runnable state a thread will only start running when processor will give it some kind of time and the processor is not free to give time to our threads only processor needs to do many other things also the same processor needs to run our eclipse also the same processor needs to record the video also same processor needs to handle this pvt also and many other background jobs also it needs to do so it can give time to any of the threads and hence every time you are going to execute the code the output is going to be different but few things are for sure that all the threads will be created initially every repository will be assigned to one particular thread then all the threads are going to work parallelly. Every thread will take almost like five seconds. At the end, they are going to finish the job. Again, there is no guarantee that whether the order of starting is going to be same as order of finishing or not. Maybe it is giving more priority to thread two, thread one or thread zero. It can be anything. Yeah. And at the end, it is going to finish the main thread. This time main cannot finish first because we have applied the joining we are saying main that you need to wait for the completion of other threads and as you can see it just took five seconds this time which is the correct answer because every thread was taking five seconds and again this 46 as i told you we are instantiating the object we are going for the for loop and some other things printing so 46 42 a small number will be there after five seconds yeah but that is negligible again so this is how the things are going to work and hence we can say we have achieved the multi-threading in java also yeah. now it doesn't matter that whether you are going to have three repositories 5 10 20 30 we can have that many number of threads all the threads can work parallelly and you don't need to make any big change in the code for that the only change needed is here you just make the multiple number of repositories provide all the repositories in your this repository array and every time the for loop is going to execute it will start a new thread automatically for each and every repository and this way we can always achieve the same in five seconds five seconds because we have de deliberately kept this if we are going to remove it will even come out to be a smaller one but I'm not doing that because in the smaller code, we cannot appreciate how the multi-threading is going to work. At that point of time, if the code is very, very small, you may feel that there was no benefit of using multi-threading also. Because when we are creating a thread, again, that is going to take some time. So if you will say that I just need to print a simple statement, hello world, can I go for a multi-threading? The answer is no. Why should you go for multi-threading in that kind of scenario? Obviously we can, but there is not going to be any kind of benefit there. So that's the point for this one. Now, let's try to achieve the same with the help of our runnable interface. But the basic thing I hope is clear. Now, the second one is not going to be that difficult. Rest everything is same. I hope you can trust me this entity package, this repository, repository IMPL. I'll just go for the service IMPL. Don't worry about the demos because I will be sharing my GitHub link with you from where you can easily download all the demos and you can just import them in your Eclipse or STS and you can start running them in the same order. Just follow this same order for it. So this time what I have done is that I'm having my employee service IMPL and instead of extending the thread class, I'm saying implements runnable. 
rest everything is same run method is here we are overriding but the problem will come in the demo class now here as you can see now I cannot call the start method on this service IMPL directly why because this service IMPL is the parent is runnable runnable doesn't contains the start method so what I need to do is first of all I need to create the thread class the thread object I need to create here class was already there so I need to create the thread object I need to pass the runnable object to my thread object and then I need to start from there you can compare it with the previous one let's have a quick comparison so earlier I was not anyway saying new of thread because it was not needed parent was thread only but this time the parent is renewable so first I need to provide it to new of thread and then I need to call the start now again how for understanding how this is possible you can always go for this thread you can go to its implementation and you can see that there are multiple constructors of thread so there is a constructor which is not going to take any argument there is a constructor which can take the runnable argument and there are other constructors also but we are not going to discuss about them so let's directly go for our code so this is the one join method everything is same which was there earlier it took around 5046 milliseconds let's see how much time it will take now it won't be anything much but almost something similar to 5046 only again yeah so this time it took 5055 but please don't understand that this means that runnable is going to be uh, I mean less efficient than thread there is nothing like this if I will run the same code again it may take some less time it may take some more time it simply depends on the condition of your laptop at that point of time it has nothing to be related whether you are going to use thread or runnable but the answer is going to be always something around five seconds only and since you are doing multi-threading you can always achieve this so everything is same the order and everything is exactly same here whether you go for runnable or thread so this way in from with a second demo we have understood how the thread is going to work how the runnable is going to work and now we are pretty much clear with the basic concepts now let's try about some other methods but before those methods what we will do is we will understand the life cycle of thread how the thread is going to behave during its entire life cycle it may not be important from the perspe uh, practical perspective but sometimes if you are giving any kind of interview so maybe they are going to ask you the question and I thought I can explain you the same with the help of PPT otherwise I generally don't like to explain any theoretical topic in detail so let's go there so let's start with our thread life cycle in the thread life cycle we see that whenever you are going to use the new keyword first of all your thread will always go to the newborn stage you remember we were saying new of thread or we were just saying new of employee service IMPL at that time it was actually going to the newborn if you were extending the thread class so just by saying new of employee service IMPL it went to the newborn state but when you were using runnable so when you said new of thread and pass the runnable object there it went to the newborn state then when we were calling the start method so after invoking the start method it went to the runnable state now please listen carefully here we are using the term runnable not running runnable means that our thread is able to run but who will run it the processor and it completely depends when the processor is going to provide it some kind of time the moment processor will give it some time it will come to the running state and it is not a case that if a processor has given a time to a thread then it will be with the thread only because a processor is multitasking it needs to cover other things also so it will keep on switching and because of this a thread will keep on rotating keep on oscillating between the running and runnable state every point of time 
Why? Because you know the processor will give some time to thread 0, thread 1, thread 2, main thread also, RPPT also, Eclipse also and other things also and hence that is going to happen up here because of which it will just keep on oscillating. Whenever it will come to the running state, it will print the line or it will start waiting. Whenever it is in the runnable state, it won't be able to do anything. And that will happen automatically. You don't need to code anything for that. Now, besides this, there will be some state of waiting also. Now for this, we, are, we have some kind of wait method or notify method, but that thing we are not going to cover in this tutorial. And you can just take an example that when we were calling the join for the other threads. So our main thread was doing what? It was just waiting. So at that point of time, it was in a non-runnable state cannot execute it cannot ask the processor for some kind of time because it needs to wait for other threads to complete but that's not the exact example it can be something similar exact will be by calling the wait and the notify method other example can be by calling the sleep method so you remember that after every printing we were saying thread dot sleep so when we say thread dot sleep at that time we are saying that you cannot do anything and you just need to sleep the only difference between the sleeping method and the waiting method is that in sleep you can provide the time like we were giving in terms of milliseconds but in the wait you cannot provide the time it just needs to wait and when it will come out whenever you are going to call the notify it whenever you will notify imagine that you are going to some kind of appointment uh, with someone and the person is let's say busy he's already having some meeting so he will ask you to wait in a particular lobby and once the other meeting is over the person is going to notify you that now i'm free now you can come inside so that is the same waiting and sleeping difference here the third one is that it also can go to the blocked state blocked state in the terms that whenever you are interacting with the scanner or any other kind of database or any other file or any other kinds of things any third party thing the easiest example is the scanner. Let's say you need to take input from the user. And I hope that you must have uh, created some code like hello world and there you were taking some input from the user to what is your name and then you wanted to print the name. So till the user is not going to provide some name, hit the enter button, the main thread will keep in the block state. So that is the non runnable state. In all these three, st three states, thread cannot run it just needs to wait or sleep and it is something like inactivity and at the end once the thread has completed its job then it will automatically go to the dead state which means it has done and now it's out that is in our case after printing all the five names and waiting for five seconds it will always go to the dead state again for this you don't need to do anything the moment the code is going to end the thread will also go to the dead state. We say that whenever the thread is any in one of these states which are inside the box, that is the active state. And once it will go out, whether it's a newborn or dead, that is the inactive state. Now this is maybe a little confusing that it has taken the birth, but it, th this is still not alive. So when you will call, there is a method like is alive. So if the thread is in the newborn, and you are calling is alive method it will be the answer is false if you will call upon dead it will give the answer is false but whenever it is any one of these stages it will always give you the answer is true so that is the way how we can understand the thread life cycle now let's see the same with the help of our code also so we'll go here and let's start so we will go for this time demo number three now this time our concern is not to print the names because that we have already seen so I have deleted that particular statement and what I have done is I have just kept the sleeping time after every employee yeah? there is no printing or anything as of now and it doesn't matter you can see this demo with the help of thread also runnable also I just copied it from the previous one so I'm using runnable here let's go for the demo so we are in the demo here. So what I have done is, this time my concern is to understand the various different methods. So let's see here. So just after calling the new thread method, 
what I'm doing is I'm printing a statement just after using the new keyword. I'm printing the name of thread. So we always know the name of our main thread just by calling thread dot current thread. We also knew the name of this thread also because in our service we were having the statement that this started fetching. So from there we come to know the name thread zero thread one thread two. But we can also make usage of this. We can point to the thread and we can say get name. So that is possible. Then we are checking whether it is alive or not. So I have mentioned you whenever it is in any one of those five states which were inside the box, the answer is going to be true. And then we can also see the state of that particular thread. Yeah. So all these things can be seen. So I'm just doing after the new keyword, then I'm doing after the start keyword also. I'm doing it after the join method also. And let's see what is going to be the output. So if I execute this, something here the output will look like this so first it says main started fetching that's fine now just after using the new keyword for the first time let's say i'm using it for thread zero so it says name is thread zero is alive false just after the new it is false and the state is new we were using newborn word there and here the exact name is new after start it comes to the runnable state and now it is actually alive rest of the things same then for thread 1 and thread 2 and these things can differ because again it depends whom it is giving some time now who is doing the job of printing these statements so that is a question which you can answer in the comments that who is doing the job of printing these statements which thread is actually printing these statements is it the main thread or it is thread zero who is printing this particular statement yeah. and once we have called the join method so after that again it says it is false and they are not using the word dead they are using the word terminated but in the day-to-day -day language if you will go through any of the tutorials they may go for the word as terminated or dead and that's fine yeah. so the thread is in the terminated state which we can print here we cannot print the running uh, term as such because whenever it is running it will obviously be doing that particular kind of job so it is running and you can print any other state like sleep or this because when it is sleeping it is completely inactive so if you will try to print anything on it so again that is not possible as such so those are the things with this there is another demo also and that is someone says what if, if I want to rename my thread is it possible the answer is yes it is possible so you can give a name also to your threads how just by calling this set name but remember that you need to call this set name after creating the thread so once the thread is created you can call a set name you can give it any name I'm just calling it custom thread and I so that we can know whether it will take or not so let's see so there it goes so we now we got the name as custom thread instead of the thread so this is also possible now going for the next one now here many times whenever you are going for the multi threading you will also un learn something about the priority and i was also talking about this term that processor is giving some priority let's say to thread 0 1 or 2 or main so it can give to priority to any of the threads and then that thread will keep on executing for that amount of time if we wish we can also set the priority with the help of our code also also we can set the priority we can check the priority now how to check the priority I won't be doing it but what you can do is just after the thread you can say dot get and here you can say get priority so this get priority will provide you a number which is going to be the priority of that particular thread by default every thread is going to have a priority of five and why I'm saying so so let's go for the thread class for this I'll be opening the declaration and let's go in the start of it and there we see that it was somewhere here only the priority okay it is here the minimum priority is one so any thread can have a minimum priority is one which means if there is any other thread beside this uh, R thread then other threads will give get more priority the more the number the more is the priority maximum priority is 10 and the default one or you can say the normal one is 5 
if you wish you can also set the priority just after starting the thread by calling the method set priority but why are we not doing those things the answer is even if you will go for the java documentation they will say the priority concept is just a theoretical concept as of now because the point is that we have given the priority from the java side we have said that okay your priority is 10 your priority is 1 and something like this but the moment it goes to the processor processor doesn't thinks about the priority for processor everyone is same the priority 10 is also the same priority 0 is also the same so as of now this is just a java theoretical concept of priority the only things only possible things can be here is that if we will try to set a priority of 11 or 0 or anything beside this range of 1 to 10 you will get a runtime exception if you will set a priority from 1 to 10 maybe depending on your code you will feel that okay that thread is getting more priority but in the reality that is not going to happen in the reality it simply depends that what time the processor is giving to which particular thread and that is completely random and hence you saw that any time anything can be printed thread 0 1 or 2 that is possible yeah so that is the thing here with the priority that's the reason we didn't went for getting and setting the priority in the terms of code here but it is always good to know that there is exist a concept like this now let's go for our fourth demo here let's see what do we have in this fourth demo so till now we were working with a one particular scenario we understood most of the concepts of the thread and that is fine now another important concept left is synchronization here first of all let's understand why do we need synchronization i won't be opening any kind of presentation for this and i'll directly try to explain you with the help of my code only so for this what i have done is there is a slight change in the story here so this time i'm making directly usage of a counter service interface so there i'm having a get count method and an increment count method get count will return your number increment count won't return you anything but will do some job and as the name says it will just increase the number i'm having this counter service i am built now this is a very basic one no threading nothing else now here i'm saying private int count so this is there the count variable i'm overriding the get count method which will return the count as it is and i'm also overriding the increment count method which will just increment by saying plus plus increment so you know this is pre increment i'm making usage here we also have a video of operators so there you can see this in more detail the difference between pre increment and post increment pre decrement and post decrement so that thing is there so this is the one i won't go for this service i am pill 2 and 3 as of now let's stick to this only now let's go to our demo and let's see what this code says we'll try to understand this code one by one now this time you see the class which is having the main method there only i'm saying extends thread because many people now will feel that okay that you can make a thread but you can make it only for some other class that is not a case you can make a thread for the class in which you have your main method that is also possible the only thing is you need to override the run method and you need to call the start for that so what we are doing here is here we have created a variable number of threads equals to 2 another variable number of increments is 1000 so these two variables we have created there is a variable counter service initially without any value now i am having this constructor of demo which will take the object of counter service then i am having this main method within the main method initially the value of counter service is null again then do i need this particular one let me try to delete this is it possible so okay that is not possible because i need it there okay so that is not possible maybe then i don't need it here yeah but as of now let's not delete let's keep as it is and see will it come for any usage i don't feel so let me just delete it i forgot why did i kept it okay okay now i understood the reason is why i kept it there because this particular thing is not static in nature 
hence I kept it here because from here I can only call those variables which are static and hence I kept it there but they are almost the same thing only now let's see what do we have here so here we are again having a thread array and what is the size it is 2 then we are assigning this new counter service IMPL to this one so that we have assigned to this one then what I'm saying is that there is a for loop and how many times I'm going to execute the for loop depending on the number of threads so I'm going to execute it two times yeah. so the size of array is 2 I'm executing the for loop also two times now when I will execute it for the first time the first element in the thread array will be new of demo and this counter util so this object only so here I'm instantiating and then I'm assigning it to the main one because that is what I wanted to do then I'm calling the start with it yeah. so I'm just calling the start with it for this you may find some other way also but my only purpose is to call the start method so that I can go for the run method and there I can call it by this now since I need to use the same counter variable in multiple places so I need to make it a global variable but since I'm making usage of the static method here so I ca directly cannot point the global variable here so I'm working like this you can do the same thing with some other way also that is up to you so I'm just doing it like this so for the first thread it will start the thread number one is going to start it will call the run method and then it is going to execute thousand times because I have mentioned thousand here from zero to thousand what it will do it will count it will invoke the increment count thousand times so that means when I will be doing it for thread number one or you can say thread number zero it will call increment counter method thousand times every time it will increment let's assume starting value was zero so the final value will be thousand same thing I will do with my second one also but for the second one the value won't be zero in the starting because we have a single count variable so the value will be thousand let's assume if it will just wait for the first one for the completion so starting will be thousand then again thousand so answer will be two thousand then I'm just making usage of a join method here the reason is I want to print the value of actual count versus expected count at the end if I won't use join here this line may be printed beforehand also and here what I'm doing actual count is I'm getting from the get count method and the expected is number of threads into number of increments since I have two threads thousand increments each so my expecting answer to be 2000 but let's see will I be getting the answer as 2000 or not here let's execute so I'll be executing this and let's see the output so the output is 1575 so this is not 2000 it is only 1575 let's execute it again this time it is 1959 again 1447 again 1231 again 1527 again 1263 will it ever come to 2000 the answer is maybe yes maybe no but one thing is for sure every time the number is going to be less than equals to 2000 now the question comes up is why so what you can do is you can just pause a video you can think for the reason that why this happened why the value is not 2000 always why it is actually less than that because the logic was simple one thread thousand times second thread thousand times so answer should be 2000 so why not here let's try to understand what happened with this so I'll go here and I'll say thread 0 so first of all I will be saying here thread 0 let's say that was my thread and my another thread is thread number 1 so these are the two th threads now first of all it went for thread 0 with the thread 0 it called the start method then it executed the run method and then this started now as I told you it completely depends on the processor processor will not give infinite time to thread 0 processor will not say that okay you need to increment thousand time I will allow you to do so 
processor can take the control back from thread zero at any point of time, maybe after one execution, two execution or three. Let's assume after exec every execution, it is going to take control out of this. So initially the value of count was zero. So initially the value of count was zero and once cycle of thread zero is completed, it will change it to one. So this will change it to one. Now it goes to thread number one here. So the control goes there. For thread one, the initial value is not zero now. The value is one. So it will make it to two. Let's say now it will go for this one. So from two, it will make it to three. And then from three, it will make it to four. And then from it will make five and it will make six and so on. It should have came out to be 2000 at the end. Once this has been done, yeah. it's simple. But in reality, that doesn't happen. The reason is that although it allows it to invoke the increment method, but even if it is allowing it to in invoke the increment method, the implementation which we have here is plus plus count. Now you may feel this is a very small thing, but actually it is not. Here we are having three statements in reality. St statement number one is fetch current value of count. So that is to fetch the previous value of count, whether it is zero, one or two. Then second one is add one to current value. So we are going to add one to the current value here. So we don't need this. We will be adding one to it. And step number three is assign back. Assign back to count variable. So we need to assign the increase value back to the count variable because of which we say these are actually three operations and not a single one. And many times what will happen is when the for loop has started, a particular execution is going on. It has invoked the increment count. At that point of time, maybe it has just fetched the current value. Before it could have added one or assign it back, the control went away. So that means that thread zero saw that current value is six. So it saw the current value is six, but before it could add one or maybe it could assign uh, the same to the back count, the control went away. So control came out of thread zero and the value was still six. Now when the thread one will see the value is still six and let's say it is able to add one and assign back also. So it will make seven. So actually two executions have completed, but the value has been increased by one only. The same may happen again. This time it was able to fetch. It was able to add, but it was not able to assign. So it is still seven. Now this is able to fetch, able to add, able to assign. It became eight. After four execution value just increased by two units overall. This time it was able to fetch able to add, able to assign nine, but this was not able to do, let's say if add or assign and the value was nine. And this thing will happen multiple times till thousand. Because of that particular reason, the value is always going to be less than or equal to 2000. It will never be more than 2000 for sure, but can be less than or equal to 2000. I hope that is clear for this and here also this is clear something like this now let's do something like this in a second case so earlier what we were doing we were always executing it once we were checking now what we have done is rest of the logic is same the inner logic is same just I have added a do while loop out outside this and I'm saying that till the point the value didn't, didn't becomes 2000. You just keep on executing because it was very, you know, difficult to execute it again and again and hope that 2000 will come. So what I have done is I have just added a do while loop outside this and I'm saying that whenever 2000 will come, then only you stop. If it will come for the first time, it will stop. If it will never come, it will never stop. 
let's see by this way whether it comes or not otherwise we just need to execute the first code again and again thus there is no difference so when i execute you see there is some difference okay for the first time the value was 2000 now since the value was 2000 it was able to execute again so i was pretty wrong there when i explained you so i'm saying that till the point it is 2000 it will keep executing the moment it is not 2000 it will stop so for the first time it was 2000 second time it was not so it stopped let's execute it again for the first time only it was not again this time it was able to execute four runs single run single again two runs and that will keep on varying from time to time whenever you are executing it may be a single run it may be multiple runs it can be anything out here yeah so this is the point for us let's try to reverse the logic so this time we will say until it is not equivalent to 2000 it will keep running let's see what happens now so we will see that initially it was never equivalent to 2000 and then somehow it became equivalent to 2000 and then it stopped so that is the case every time a different output because every time the processor will behave differently and we cannot control this particular thing and that is the benefit of multi-threading you can't say that which your copy is going to work faster or slower what you want is at the end you just want some work to be done but this can be problematic sometimes let's say I want it to provide me a value of 2000 only or what I want is that once it enters this method it comes out only when it has executed all these three steps so I still want multi-threading I want my work to be done faster so that it keep on switching between thread 0 and 1 but what I want is once it has entered then it should come out only after completing all the three steps not before it so then comes the synchronization in picture so what I can do is I can just make the method as synchronized you don't need to make your run method synchronized but this method the thing which you want so I'm making it a synchronized method now let's see what is the benefit we are going to achieve so I'm going to execute demo 3 because there I have kept it rest the logic is same the only difference is that here I'm calling service ampl 2 so when I go for demo number 3 it goes like this so the value is always 2000 and hence it keeps on executing because this is synchronized this means that it can never come out of this particular method until and unless it completes every time it is able to complete and hence the value is always 2000 at the end it keeps on executing so that is the thing here just by adding a keyword synchronized and if you remember that even the start method I guess was using this term somewhere if we see so let's have a look if I'm not wrong so if I go to the declaration this synchronized word was used there also the purpose is only to sync that between two threads that one thread the logic cannot come out of one until unless it has completely finished that syncing is there now this syncing can be harmful also sometimes because imagine if there is another infinite loop within this method then control can never come out of this so those kinds of things should not happen and those we call as multi-threading problems which we are not going to discuss in this video otherwise it will become too long that we will discuss in some other video but before that let's check out one more thing sometimes what happens is let's say the method contains multiple lines let's say 20 or 30 lines now out of those lines you find that only a particular part of code is important not the whole method and you want that whenever the control goes to that part of code then it should not come out in between it should be able to complete if it is in any other part of the logic it's fine so for that you can make usage of synchronized block also like this here this represents the current object the current thread of it yeah? so let's say if we have a line here and the control is in this line it can come out if the control is in this line it can come out but once the logic once the control goes here it cannot come out before completion 
and this is generally we do for the bigger methods so that is the one and it can be executed same let me just change it to 3 and you can see the execution I just need to import this by saying import and now if I execute the output is still same because it's a single liner method only for the big methods it will depend whether you want to make the whole method as synchronized or just a part of method so that can be done now let's close all these so that was about the synchronization now let's go for one last concept for this demo which we call as daemon threads so let's go here now this is going to be a simple short example let's see what do we have here first of all I'll show you this code of my thread now let's see what do we have I'm saying here extends thread which means I want multi threading here I'm only having the run method it is possible you may not have any other method within the run method interestingly I have made the while true which means infinite loop so what it will do it will just keep on printing the name of this thread infinite number of times with a sleep of 100 milliseconds so it will go for a sleep of 100 milliseconds it will keep on printing the name of it simple let's see how we are going to call this so we have this demo and even demo contains the thread so even demo is extending the thread here and within this we have a main method we don't have any run method for this then what I'm saying is I'm creating an object of my thread which is this particular class I'm creating an object I'm calling start for this which means this run method will be invoked the moment I invoke the start method so that is done and it will start doing its job of printing the statement sleeping for 1000 milliseconds parallelly the work of main method is not finished for the main method I'm saying that you sleep for 1000 milliseconds you sleep here for 1000 milliseconds and after that I'm just printing the name of this thread yeah. so two threads are there parallelly the main thread as well as the other thread is also there yeah. and do we need this one again I don't remember exactly let me just remove it and see I don't think so we need it here maybe I have created it for some other purpose until unless I have forgotten so this looks something like this so let's execute and see what happens so it is running infinitely because we have a while condition here infinite loop yeah let's come on the top so what we see we see that this line got executed I have removed the thread from here because that was not needed maybe by mistake I just kept there so I'm saying thread new of my thread that's there then I'm saying thread dot start so I have started this one so it will print the line saying thread 0 only one thread is created then it will sleep for 1000 then it will say this 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 and something so let's have a count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 so 10 times it executed now after 10 times it completed sleep 1000 milliseconds so this is 10 times of this sleep so this came so the main method came out of sleep after 1000 milliseconds yeah? and it printed its line so that was done at this point of time both of them were competing this is just by chance that main got the control otherwise we can may see that after 11 prints it is going for the main so that can be possible again yeah we don't have any control upon this so this is possible here so it completed its job and then again it is going for thread 0 printing so that was done here now you will say that okay what did we achieve here the answer is as of now we didn't achieve we just saw what was the code here so this is how it worked now, let's say that we want my thread to stop automatically the moment this main thread has completed the job this is a requirement I don't want my thread to execute infinitely I want it to stop after the main thread you will say okay there is not a big deal in it 
what you can do is instead of making it a infinite loop you just put it some condition of thousand because we know that this will be able to sleep for thousand and after that it is going to print the line it will end so here also you just say that it will run only 10 times or something just by multiplying but I don't want that I want it dynamic I want that here it can be any number here it can be any number of sleep but my thread should automatically stop once the main thread has stopped so such kind of things we call as demons demons are the one which we say they are going to always work in the background let's take an example now on the YouTube platform where you may be watching this video so there the importance of creator will remain till the point there is a watcher there is a person who is going to watch the video if no one is going to watch the video what will the creator do they can't just simply create the video and just sit quiet because then there won't be any benefit of it until unless someone is watching okay so here we say the importance of creator is still the point there is a, any particular subscriber or any particular viewer similarly here we want to say that my thread the importance of my thread is only till the point there is some other thread going on or the main thread going on so I will say that creators are demons here so the importance of creator is only till there is a subscriber so let's go for the demo too and see how we can make the my thread as a demon thread here to work in the background the other example can be that let's say there is some organization which is supporting a particular client they are having production employees which are supporting some kinds of clients also but then within the same organization there are another departments like the HR department security department operations department the importance of those departments is only till the point we have some production employees who are going to support client because they are the main people who are going to generate the income for the company if there is no one with the production there is no benefit of HR team or the or the operations teams or the security team whom they will support so same is the thing here so how we can make a thread as daemon just by saying thread dot set daemon remember that you can just make a thread as daemon before starting and after it has taken the worth so before it has started before it comes to the runnable state then only you can make a daemon just by saying set daemon true by default it is false in nature let's see the benefit so this time you see thread 0 has stopped the execution I haven't made any other change this is the only change and the difference is now thread 0 is not running infinite number of times because it's a daemon thread I'm saying that you need to stop the moment any other thread is stopped how many threads do we have besides thread 0 only the main so main has stopped so thread 0 is also going to stop here and that is how the demons work you may ask what will happen if I set it after the start let's try to do that also so I'll try to keep it out after the start and let's see what happens now you should always keep on trying and not worry about the errors when you are learning so this is what going to happen I have stopped it manually so this time it is going to give you an error a runtime error in your main thread it says that it is in some illegal state after runnable you cannot make it a daemon since there is an error in the main thread main thread will never go to sleep or will never execute this statement because main thread has already ended because of the exception and other thread will keep on working so this is how we can understand the concept of daemon thread other example if you will ask me in Java that how this daemon comes up into the picture so you can take example of the garbage collector now when this garbage collector executes the garbage collector keeps on executing at the back end till what point of time the garbage collector will keep on executing till your code is running the moment your code is going to stop all other objects will be deleted and that is the last job of garbage collector garbage collector will also stop so we can see garbage collector is also a daemon here it's a daemon thread here so that's a real life example with the Java also so that was it guys 
with this particular demos of multi-threading we won't be going for these demos they will be covered in some other video where we are going to discuss about the problems of multi-threading so that was it with the multi-threading part i hope you have liked the videos if you like this video then you can just hit the subscribe button after this we are also going to release many more videos related with the concurrency and many other topics in the same sequence so that you can do also you can download all these demos from the github the github link i will be providing in the description section thanks everyone